by Enterprise Fitness. And what we're going to get into now, and uh, some of the guys, Terry, Terry and guys you've talked before, have heard this presentation before, but it is so important that you know, I was really looking, every time I run one of these, the last time I ran an Eat Waiters Abs seminar, I was actually up in Mackay, I got invited to, to fly down and present there, which is an awesome experience. But this is always one of the, I guess, the fundamental pieces because if, as uh, you know, Marshall and a few others in the room who have done formal uh, nutrition classes and et cetera, et cetera, one of the key concepts that will teach you is about calorie counting. You see it on Weight Watchers, you see it all the time. You know, calorie counting is so important. The guy on calorie who, who broke this myth um, from a scientific point of view, his name is Gary Tabs, and this is his book. It's called Good Calories, Bad Calories. Uh, there's about 500 pages of just, I don't know, maybe 200 pages of just references, scientific references. Um, Marty's smiling because the only people who can read this are really lawyers, I'll be honest with you. I got about, I don't know, probably 100 to 120 pages in, and I go, what has this guy got on YouTube? Let me watch some of his presentations because <laughs> this book's not doing it for me. But he has actually written another book. Uh, I bought it more for the references, to be honest. Um, but he has written another more user-friendly book called uh, Why We Get Fat by Gary Tabs. Um, the guy's a genius. Buy that book if you want to uh, know more about Gary Tabs. But uh, yeah, Why We Get Fat by Gary Tabs. Otherwise, look him up on YouTube. But if you buy that book, just know that... Yeah, you want to be a lawyer <laughs> if you want to read it. it, it it's, a, it's a pretty tough read, okay? So, uh, yeah, yeah. Why we get fat's a lot better. Um, now, I taught for the AIF for about 18 months. And I remember the day that I taught nutrition for the AIF. I was going through the slides going, yeah, this... All right, I said to them, I remember the words I said to them, I go, I can either teach you what the AIF wants me to teach or I can teach you what I want you to teach. Which one do you want? And they said, teach what you want to teach. And I was just ripping through all their slides and telling them, all right, this is completely wrong. Uh, this is an old way of doing it. But when it really comes down to it, calorie counting, okay, again, these things fascinate me, so I have to look at the history. Where does it come from? Well, it actually originates in basically, oh, the earliest record is 1890, okay? Uh, a guy by the name of William, William, Wilbur Atwater, an agricultural chemist, invented this device that was called a caloric oven. Now, I've got a picture on the slides, but I'll just draw it briefly here. And what the caloric oven is, basically a beacon, you put water there, um, you've got your fire, sorry, I've drawn that wrong, doesn't matter. There's the water there, that's the fire, you put your food there. Think of it as just basically an oven where you put food in and it measures the, the temperature of that food to measure the ash, measures the energy in that food. So essentially what it's basically saying is that that oven is equivalent to the human digestive system. And if you think about that concept for a second, you realize how uh, moronic it actually is, okay? So what you're taught in, I guess, mainstream nutrition and uh, you know, Weight Watchers and all those other, other programs is that a calorie is a calorie. But first you've got to ask the question, what is a calorie? Well, by net definition, a calorie is a unit of energy or heat. It takes to raise temperature of one gram of water degrees Celsius. Uh, calories equal to four joules, a common unit in energy used for the physical science. I mean, I've been studying nutrition for who knows how long, and you know that even confuses me. Okay, how the hell are any other, you other guys supposed to get and really understand what a calorie is? Okay, a unit of energy to measure heat. If you look at this, I don't think these guys were getting out there. You know, www.calorieking.com.au. <laughs> You know, let's kill the buffalo. Now, let's measure how many calories do we eat for the day. Oh, no, we better expend this energy. Okay. As a rule of thumb, things that make you exert energy will make you feel good. Okay. For example, exercise will make you feel good. Okay. Stimulants, which actually help you exert energy. Say coffee, it makes you feel good. Okay. Anything that restricts energy kind of depresses you. All right. So, in saying that, energy really is the currency of life. Okay, we all have energy and we're all supposed to burn energy. And this idea that you know, if we, we're supposed to be on 1,500 calories for the day and if we go under that, we have to m magically balance it out and do you know, another, let's go for another run, okay? So we, we don't overconsume. But if you actually look at this from a, a mathematical point of view, and you know, God knows I'm not the best at maths, but if you look at this from a mathematical point of view, okay, if you overshot the mark by 20 calories a day, in, I think it's 20 years, you'd put on 40 pounds or 20 kilos, okay? So it's true that 
you need to expend what you eat, but if you look at it from an engineer's point of view, how would you do that? Well, the human body has these hormones and it basically wants to shuttle the, 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 that, those nutrients, that energy, into the muscle where it can be actually used and utilized and burnt off. The body is a master regulating machine. I mean, how many people, I guess, in the room have stayed the same kind of weight from their 20s right up into their 30s? You know, the body must be quite the mathematician to do that, okay? So, but again, you have to ask the question, why does the body accumulate fat? And it's really more based on hormones than this simple equation of maths of if I eat 500 calories more than I expend, I'm going to put on weight. It actually doesn't work like that, okay? So, um, if energy... Yeah, basically, this is all what I've already said. Energy, and this, is, this slide is actually taken from the AIF. This is exactly what they teach. I know because I used to teach there, okay? Um, but this is the science of nutrition that we still know. And by the way, this is a 110-year theory that's still going that hasn't died. 110 years this theory has been going for. It doesn't get people results. I mean, it works to an extent. If you get someone on a 900-calorie diet, yes, they're going to lose weight, but they're going to be starved. And then the body's going to want to compensate. So when they start eating, they're just going to put on a whole lot more weight. And that's basically what happened to me when I was competing. Went on a really super starvation diet. People say to me, you know, after they compete, they put on maybe four or five kilos after the comp. I put on 14 in three days. Okay. So um, I, yeah, I understand this quite well. And you're laughing because you had that similar experience. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so it happens. So if a calorie is a calorie, technically I should be able to eat dirt because cal uh, dirt has calories in it. No, that's nonsense, okay? Um, you shouldn't be able to eat dirt, but according to that theory, if you really break it down, essentially, you should be able to eat dirt and you can't. So this is what I was talking about as a, a caloric oven. This is where you put the food, that's the measure, but it's basically saying that our digestive tract equals that. And again, as I've already said, that's complete nonsense because what you're saying is our pancreas, our liver, our uh, in small intestines, large intestines, the emotions that we have, the hormones that we have, the genes that we have are completely equivalent to that. I mean, that's absolute nonsense. You know, you can't compare the two. They're completely different systems. One's a closed system. Did you know that the, the emotional state that you're in can actually affect the way food digests? Okay. So, I mean, that's just one variable out of, you know, hundreds. And I've already spoken about that. So then you have the other thing that you have to put into account. 